Oh, AI is definitely a, a giant revolution which we face now in text and in pictures which we all work with. But the real revolution is still to come because it's hitting physical products, products which we work with all the day like cars, uh, hazard appliances and also factory products. And that is the step which we will now future fuel uh, in, the next, uh, in the next years. And Bosch is in the middle of this because we are building products for cars, for hazard appliances and for uh, industry products. Stefan, as we talk about the factory of the future, agentic AI, robots talking to each other, teams that are effectively software online, just paint a picture for us for the average viewer to understand how different this is going to be versus the, the factory that we've known so far. Now, the agentic AIs are actually like employees which are around you, so they can help you doing your job in the factory, and that will in, enable our factory uh, people which are dealing with complex machines and processes to really interact with AI to solve problems like, uh, like interruptions of the production or workflow problems. Agentic AIs are like companions which you have around you and that's a big revolution. Stefan, one of the big issues is what the workforce of the future will look like as we deploy more agentic AI, but also physical AI robots, of course. And we've already seen a number of announcements from those that have been on the front foot in adopting more technology, the likes of Amazon that are cutting back on some workers. What do you make of uh, how many employees are going to be required in the future and the evolution of those jobs? Because we know there's been a skill shortage in Germany. I mean, you will see both. On one hand, we need in factories and in production that we increase productivity. And there is Agentic AI and other AI tools fantastic. On the other hand, we need a lot of people that do AI. We have 5,000 experts working on AI as experts. We have had 1,500 patents filed in the last five years. And that's why we also invest that 2.5 billion until 27. That is an investment into people, mostly. So you will see both. On one hand, you will see a high increase in productivity. On the other hand, you will have to invest into people who do AI. Stefan, let me ask you about what we're seeing in the auto sector, given you are uh, a, a key part of the auto technology space. We've seen surprisingly strong demand, especially here in Europe, for hybrids, uh, and it seems to be at the expense of full EVs. What does this mean, in your view, for the trajectory of um, full EV adoption? Are we still going to get there? Is it just a matter of this take being a longer transition than the industry initially expected? Well, that's exactly what's happening. We will, from the customer side, see a bit longer transition period. So people are more adjusting to be towards plug-in hybrids and maybe also range extenders in Europe to come. We will see. That would be a development like we see it in China because the full battery electric vehicles are fantastic in cities. But many people also have other tasks right now to solve, so they choose plug-ins. That doesn't mean that the battery electric vehicle transition will stop or will take much longer, but it may be a different transition than we had in mind five years ago. So that's what we have to adjust. That's a big change because at the same time, the total volume of the automotive industry is not growing.